welcome back friends we are talking about antigen antibody interactions we have talked about the agglutination hemagglutination processes active and passive type of hemagglutination now in this video we'll be talking about another type of test it is called coombs test this is very important test because uh, this is not a general kind of agglutination test it is a type of agglutination test but it is a different kind now in case of uh, agglutination or hemagglutination test what we need to find we want to find whether the antigen is interacting with the antibody or not but in case of coom test what we want to find whether there is any antigen antibody complex present inside a sample or not whether there is an antigen antibody complex or not instead of a simple antigen so that's the difference between the coom test and the typical general anti uh, antigen testing uh, like the agglutination processes okay again here we also observe agglutination to get our result but simply the process is detect the antigen antibody complex okay now before going into the details of coom test i must tell you another important fact is that sometimes what happens in the body what we produce we produced different types of antibodies and uh, against antigens that we have encountered so there are antigens inside our body and we provide antibodies now sometimes we provide anti anti antigen uh, antibodies that means suppose we are having in our body a type of, a type of antigen for example say so let me draw the rbc here okay so we are having rbc and these things suppose these are the typical type of antigens that are present on the surface of rbc now what we have produced in this case we produce some kind of antibodies now those antibodies i am again draw them in red color here are the antibodies suppose okay so we produce this antibody which are going against this type of antigen but remember if we ourselves produce the antigen and also produce the antibody against it what it will do the antibody will agglutinate all the red blood cells and what we have agglutination and we will eventually die so we never produce antibodies against antigen which is present in our we pr provide this antigen antibody complexes but not always this result in agglutination <laughs> okay because if it always try to agglutinate all the red blood cells then it will be difficult for us to survive because it will degrade our own anti uh, own rbc it will settle our own rbc down so we don't have any blood circulation system or the oxygen carrying system so as a result uh, we will die but we don't want this so sometimes what we produce we produce antibodies so let me write we produce antibodies against antigens but this antibodies are not a type of antibody which will agglutinate the antigen maybe due to the concentration of antigen maybe due to the ratio of antigen antibody is maintained inside our body in such a way so that this antigen antibody complex does not end up with does not end up with agglutination so they won't lead to agglutination that's the case they won't lead to agglutination this never happens in many cases this never happens a very suitable example for that is rh factor or anti rh antibody now what we can see inside suppose if we look for a mom or a mother which is having uh, rh negative so so that means in the red blood cell of uh, of of the mother what we are having we don't have any kind of antigen so if we get we have antigen for other but we don't have antigen rh antigen actually so this is the rbc of the mother and uh, she has antibodies uh, antigens again uh, different types of antigens but not rh antigen okay so a different type of antigen so this is a type this is a type this is another type but don't have any kind of rh antigen there but what she is producing uh, so as she uh, does not have any kind of rh antigen so uh, it is not uh, so so it uh, she never makes anti rh antibodies also uh, also okay so what what uh, she is doing here in this case so what, what she is not having any anti rh uh, and uh, heavy rh antigen but she is making so let me write it here she is making anti rh antibody so this is called anti rh antibody because she is not having any antigen but it is producing the kind of antibodies now what will happen if this mom is having a son which is rh positive now what will happen now if she is having a son birth she is having a son or before birth 
before even birth inside the womb what we are having she is having its son so here say this anti anti uh, blood red blood cell of the son and this this son is having the type of antigen now this antigens along with rest of this part these antigens are rh antigen because this is rbc of sun and this sun is having rh positive nature so as this sun is having rh positive that means it is expressing the rh antigens onto the surface of the rbc now as this uh, boy is living in the womb so he is also getting the antibodies right he is also getting the antibodies against rh factor so this is anti rh antibody so it is having rh antigen and also having the anti rh antibody that means that anti rh antibody is going to attack and attach with or interact with this rh antigen now what it will do if it is attached with this antigen so it will make a complex we all know that it will make this kind of complex now once it it will make this complexes here it is it makes the complex and it will result in into the agglutination but not always it leads to the agglutination why because if it always leads to the agglutination this boy will die right this boy will die but in in this system it is maintained in such a way that this anti rh antibody is maintained in such a way so that they won't result or end up with this agglutination process so in this case they may have bound with this antigen antibody so we can find this antigen antibody complex in the system but it will not end up with agglutination so we can have this antigen antibody complex this is simply an antigen antibody complex here the antigen is rh factor so it is an antigen antibody complex but it won't lead to agglutination now this kind of antibody antigen complex this this type of antibodies which will never end up with this uh, this kind of agglutination is called in incomplete antibodies now this is called incomplete antibodies okay now this is the concept now if always it leads to the agglutination now here the boy will die so that these are the reasons why they haven't modified in this way okay so this is the case now using comb state test what we can detect we can detect both the situations we can detect this situation whether uh, the sample is having whether the sample is having a free antibody against a typical type of antigen or not or whether our sample is having antigen antibody complex we can detect both these situations using comb's test okay now in usual cases what we can detect is simply the antigen antibody complexes now if we are having this kind of antigen antibody complex let me it's rbc of sun so it's this kind of antigen antibody complex which don't end up with agglutination we get this so so even if this complex is present in the sample's blood or the system of our patient we cannot find any kind of agglutination so how can we detect them to detect them we need to Go go with the typical type of antibody antigen interactions. Here it is already interacted. The antigen is already interacting with the antibody. Now the result for for that is to cross link this antigen antibody complexes together. Now how can we cross link the antigen antibody complex to provide or providing another mode or another type of antibody? Now those antibodies are supplied by this Coombs state as called Coombs reagent. So when we add Coombs reagent. let me draw it here when we add coombs reagent inside in the coombs reagent what we are having we are having this antibodies so these are called these are the uh, components of coombs reagent so here are the coombs antibodies okay so coombs antibodies so this coombs antibody will come and they will attach to this antibody antigen complexes and then agglutinate this complex so that we get our so we have the agglutination and we can detect yes yes there is an antigen antibody complex present there now obviously there are some incomplete antibodies that's why we haven't got any kind of agglutination result before even though there is an antigen antibody complex is already formed but how can you know that the antigen antibody complex is there because we adding this type of coombs reagent or this coombs antibodies which are cross linking the antigen antibody complexes and we get the agglutination after that
okay okay this is called direct Coombs test because simply we just take the sample so this is uh, so this this red thing is totally acting as a sample which is having the antigen antibody complex from uh, before and then we add this second thing which is the blue thing which is a Coombs reagent the part of Coombs reagent and look for the agglutination if we get it that proves that yes antigen and antibody complex was present now the second kind we once we need to find out whether the patient's a sample or serum of the patient is containing any kind of incomplete antibodies or not how can you find them whether it is having any incomplete antibodies or not in those cases what we need to do we need to first provide this sample uh, onto this rbc's okay so we are having rbc then you need to provide this uh, this anti rh antibody in this case at the very beginning so that they form this complex because normally it is not having any kind of antigen getting so it is not having any kind of antigen so what we need to take it in this case so if this is the patient we take this one as a, a sample so the sample will contain antibody against Rh factor so we take this so our sample is having antibody against Rh factor then what we will add with it we will add RBC which is having Rh factor which is having Rh factor we are adding this RBC and we take this part which is acting as a sample from our patient from the mother which is simply carrying us this uh, antibody against Rh okay, guys? okay so we take this one and we take this RBC also now once we take uh, those two things in our hand then what we need to do we need to so we are having antigen and antibody all together then what we need to add is Coombs reagent so again Coombs reagent means we will be adding this blue colored antibodies again Coombs reagents are nothing but antibodies so here it is Coombs reagents are provided then what we will be looking for then we will be looking for agglutination if there is agglutination then what we can tell yes inside the patient's sample there is anti-RH antibody otherwise this agglutination never happens okay so that's it so we will be adding for so this part of the step is called indirect Coombs test so for the indirect Coombs test we need to do two steps first step will be provide will be taking the sample only the serum which will contain uh, the antibody against RH factor then what will be providing RBC or the antigen on our cells so for this indirect Coombs test we will be providing an RBC as well as the Coombs reagent for the direct Coombs test we simply add the Coombs reagent because there is already antigen antibody interaction uh, is done inside the sample because we have taken the sample both antibody antigen complexes but for the indirect test we take the just the serum but not the RBC in this case we need to supply the RBC from outside so that's the difference between these two types of Coombs test and Coombs test can be utilized for finding out this kind of incomplete antibodies and obviously uh, the weak antibodies that like that and also the interactions like this antigen antibody complexes okay so that's it and I hope that's helpful thank you